Hey everybody, welcome to Science in 60's 60th video, the creepiest experiments ever conducted. Have you ever tried to make a two-headed dog? In the 1950's, a Russian scientist did. All scientific breakthroughs had to start somewhere. Same with organ transplants. And Vladimir wanted to be first, so he tried to make a two-headed dog. And not through genetic manipulation, no. These are the old days. He did it by attaching the front end of a puppy to the side of a German Shepherd's neck, with the puppy's legs on either side. And he didn't just do it once, he did it 20 times. And most of them actually survived for a few weeks. One survived for almost a month. As creepy as it was, his work did lead to heart and lung transplant advancements, and it spurred other scientists on to try experimenting. Do you know what and when the first major organ transplant was? It was actually done in the 2nd century BC by an Indian doctor who did skin grafts to reconstruct noses. Did you know you can curb criminal behavior by transplanting extra testicles onto a man? That's what a doctor at the famous San Quentin prison thought, and he had plenty of guinea pigs. I mean, inmates. He believed that criminal behavior in men was due to low testosterone. Yeah, I said low testosterone. And how do you fix it? Well, you increase the testosterone, of course. Now, let's set aside the fact that he wanted to increase the testosterone level of inmates, which we already know is a bad idea. The creepy part was how he went about it. During his time from 1913 to 1951, he successfully transplanted executed criminals' testicles onto living inmates. And he didn't just do it once or twice either. In 1922, he claimed the operation's a success and went on to perform it 600 times. This is how to step into a bullfighting ring with a charging bull, unable to move, with only a remote control for defense. In 1963, a guy named Jose Delgado experimented putting chips into bulls' brains. The goal was to try to control their behavior using a remote device that was controlled to electrodes inside their brains. They would stimulate certain areas to get certain behavioral responses, or stop certain responses. And to prove it worked, Jose got into a bullfighting ring with one of these bulls armed only with his remote control. As soon as the bull saw him, it started charging. He pressed a button, and the bull turned around uninterested and walked away. What do you do when you live in an age before Kevlar? You've heard the saying, you've got a thick skin? Well, a dermatologist tried to make that a reality, and the U.S. military funded it. He tried numerous creams with tons of chemicals that produced pain, itching, scarring, but never the elusive tough skin shell he was going for. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, some doctor's assistants don't get paid enough, especially this guy. A German surgeon was the first one to operate using spinal anesthesia by injecting coke into a spinal cord. After six successful surgeries, all the patients were still complaining about nausea, vomiting, severe headaches, leg and back pain, so the doctor decided to try it on himself to see what the results were. He got his assistant to inject him, but it didn't work, and it actually left a pretty good sized hole in his spine, and he could repeat the procedure. So, a couple hours later, they injected his assistant. And in what I can only call a little bit of passive-aggressive payback for the back thing, he kicked him in the shins, hit him with a hammer, pulled his pubic hair, lit cigars were put out on his skin, and crushed his testicles. Now let's remember, they were trying to test the after-effects of the anesthesia. Now the assistant did have all the same symptoms, and that procedure stayed the same for decades and was very successful for spinal anesthetic, which was a revolution medicine. Have you ever wanted to beat up a clown? Okay, maybe. Have you ever programmed children to beat up a clown? These guys did. We hear a lot about violence on TV and in video games affecting our children. That concept's been around since the early 60s when it was a little more socially acceptable to mess with kids' heads. So hopefully you've seen one of the old inflatable Boba the Clown punching bags. So you got that and three groups of kids. The first group of kids was shown a video of an adult punching, kicking, and even hitting the doll with a hammer. One group of kids was shown a non-violent video of it, and another group of kids weren't shown a video at all. All three groups of kids were unleashed into the room with the Boba doll at the same time, with some hammers, some fake guns. Guess what happened? The kids showed the violent video were the most aggressive, punching, kicking, even using the hammer on the doll. 
but someone pointed out it's a punching bag. It's meant to be punched, kick, etc. So they did the experiment again, this time with a real clown in the videos and a real clown in the room. You want to guess what happened then? The exact same thing. One hits him with a hammer, one kid puts the gun to his head, and the rest just keep kicking and punching him. And the kids that were shown the violent video were the most violent. What face would you make while decapitating a rat? Today, facial and micro-expression study are commonplace, but in 1924, they weren't. And a recent psychology graduate wanted to do a study to see if there was one universal facial expression for shock and disgust. So, he grabbed all of his old college friends and went for it. He started them off with sticking their hands in buckets of frogs and slime, smelling ammonia, flashing pornographic pictures in front of them. But for the last piece, he handed them a knife and a rat. And he told them to decapitate it. And if they didn't, he decapitated it in front of them. And what did the study reveal? Nothing. He didn't find one universal facial expression for shock or disgust, probably because of his parameters. And I'm thinking his friends probably didn't hang out with him too much after that. Do you know where the inspiration for Frankenstein and some of Edgar Allan Poe's poems come from? Long before Edison invented the light bulb, we knew about electricity and some ways we could use it. And before 1803, we knew that if we added electricity to a recently dead animal, it would actually move. You probably know where this is going, but it gets creepy. Yet again, the subject is a prisoner. He had recently been executed for murder, so, eh, karma, I guess. The scientist doing the study started small. He hooked up an electrode to his mouth and his ears, and his face began to move, even giving him the facial expression of pain. And it was said that his left eye opened. Through trial and error, he figured out that the muscles between the electrodes were the ones that moved. And his goal was to reanimate the entire corpse. So what do you think he did? He put an electrode on his ear, and he put the other up his butt. The people that were there witnessing it said that the corpse was on the eve of coming back to life. And it's partially from that real life experiment that Mary Shelley gave birth to the idea of Frankenstein. So something good came out of it. Have you ever wanted to see the world through a cat's eyes? Well, there's a scientist who was curious about it. Uh, if anybody's from PETA, this might be a really good time to mute the video now. I'm going to tell you what he did, and I want you guys to take a guess in the comments below when the experiment took place and if it worked. And no Googling it. That takes all the fun out of it. So here we go. He chemically paralyzed the cat and put metal rods glued into the whites of his eyes, then turned him to face a movie playing on a screen. Then he put electrodes into the part of the cat's brain that controlled vision and visual processing. Those stimuli were sent back to a screen that the doctor hoped he would see what the cat was seeing. So guys, again, when did the experiment take place and was it successful? I'll come back in two weeks, let you guys debate it out a little bit, and I'll give you the answer. And finally, did you know that scientists have created zombie dogs twice? In 1940, Russian scientists released a video of severed dog heads that were kept alive for several hours. They didn't prove they were alive by measuring electrical impulses in their brain. No, these severed heads actually wiggled their ears, responded to sounds, and licked their mouths. They claim they kept the heads alive with an artificial circulatory machine, kind of like we use today for open heart surgery. And in 2005, American scientists created another pack of zombie dogs, and this time, it wasn't just the heads. They did it by flushing all the blood from their system and replacing it with an oxygen sugar saline solution. After three hours, they put the blood back in the dog's bodies, shocked them, and they all came back to life. And most of them had no long-lasting damage. It's definitely creepy, but this could actually have a lot of really good benefits for future medicine, especially for people that are losing too much blood on scene and doctors can't repair their injuries fast enough. That or this could be how the Walking Dead zombie apocalypse starts, but yeah, well, we'll see what happens. And that's Science in 60.